Harry Kane has not arrived at preseason training as expected this morning, as per rep- reports from numerous sources at Sky and Football Daily. We know that he has been pushing for a move and an exit away from the football club. This may get played down over the course of the next hour or two from Tottenham Hotspur. Maybe they will suggest that he was he was expected to not return yet. They've given him an extended break and an extended holiday. But lots more reports are going to come out in the next few days. It does very much appear like Harry Kane pushing and trying to force this move away from Tottenham Hotspur and to Manchester City or another Champions League level football club over the course of this season. We want your thoughts and we want your opinions on this big breaking news this morning. And as we confirmed yesterday on our Twitter account, this was going to be an explosive and an exciting week in the transfer market. We have already seen the news in relation to Lukaku today. We have already seen the news in relation to Sal Niguez. You now have this situation with Harry Kane rearing its head. Expect Jack Grealish to maybe be confirmed very, very soon as well. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Here we go. Welcome back to the Football Terrace. I do hope you are very, very well indeed. Lots to talk about this morning in terms of the transfer window. We've already done a stream only three hours ago with Lukaku's situation rearing its head. Maybe Chelsea going in for a third offer this summer to turn that a a bit official if the Haaland deal cannot be done. And now we hear and now we see all about the situation with Harry Kane. First reported this morning by Sky Sports that he had not arrived at training. 10.30 was when he was due back. Now, after this point, there was a lot of speculation and we tweeted about it ourselves. Some people claiming that this was normal. He wasn't due or expected back yet. Nuno reportedly confirmed this. I haven't seen that report myself. Then there was talks about actually he's away having a COVID test. He's going to be back tomorrow. Fabrizio Romano has since tweeted and said, Confirmed Harry Kane has not shown up to, to Tottenham's training um, as per Sky. Been told it's Harry Kane's choice and not related to a COVID test. Harry Kane is assuming that he has had a gentleman's agreement with the club since one year to leave Spurs this summer. It's interesting as well. I've been told by another journalist this morning. Of course, we saw all this. So I do what I always do. I reach out and I speak to people. It has been confirmed by some journalists that Spurs may release a statement very soon suggesting that he wasn't due back for at least another three to four days, maybe even as far as a week, giving themselves a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to this deal, when it comes to this potentially momentous transfer away from Tottenham, because that's what it will be. It would be a momentous transfer away from his boyhood club in terms of who he came through the academy with, not not necessarily who he supported as a child. It's going to be intriguing to see what comes out in the next few days. I think there's going to be another big revelation in the next 24 hours or so. Uh, I think we're going to start to see confirmation that he told friends and family that he's leaving. Maybe he said goodbye to his teammates or staff members already and whatnot. I think we're going to get confirmation of things very, very soon. You'll also get back in the other direction. Spurs will start briefing the media instantly to say, nope, this isn't happening. We're not going to sell him. But his transfer to Manchester City was always on. It was always open. It was always active. This could soon push it into those advanced stages where Manchester City and Tottenham really start to get serious. There was a train of thought by many that Harry Kane would remain professional. He would remain respectful during this process of trying to get himself out of Tottenham Hotspur. A transfer request was always expected to happen. Going on strike, refusing to train and play. Nobody quite expected that. The majority of people said that Harry Kane wouldn't do it. However, if what Fabrizio Romano has told us this morning is true, that 
he believes there's a gentleman's agreement for him to leave this year. If he feels that Tottenham Hotspur are going back against that promise, why would he not push for a move? Why would he not look to potentially move on from this point of view? So I want your views and I want your opinions on here. A lot of people referring to, I think, kind of calling him a bit of a snake here uh, is is the suggestion as well. It's mainly Stuart saying that he's being a bit of a snake but let's see what happens. Man City, Man City is certainly the front runners for this player. But who else may come in for him? Could we see a situation where maybe Chelsea come in? Maybe Manchester United, maybe Liverpool. Is it a foregone conclusion, in your opinion, that it's only going to be Manchester City that try and sign him? But as Harry Kane seemingly looks to start really pushing and really forcing this move along, what do you expect to see happen? I, I'd love your views. I would love your opinions on this. I'm, I'm going to put a poll up, the first poll of the day here, and I'm going to put this in now uh, and say this. Will Harry Kane get his move away from Tottenham this summer? It's a yes or no question. Will Harry Kane get his move away this summer? That's the first point. I then want to open up the lines now for you to come on and have your say. I want your views and I want your opinions on Harry Kane's behavior this morning. It's being verified by Fabrizio Romano, verified by some of our sources here at the Football Terrace. The done deal show, by the way, tomorrow is going to be massive. I've just been updated by Dean Jones, who has said to me, he's got big Harry Kane news. We'll be doing it tomorrow morning on the done deal show. So make sure you stay here for that one as well. But I want you to call in now and have your say. I want your views and I want your opinions. What do you think is going to happen? Omar here says, if this was Pogba, the media would crucify him. Yeah, I think some elements of the media absolutely would. I wouldn't crucify Paul Pogba, so I'm not going to crucify Harry Kane. I believe that's a fair way to behave. Um, have a go at Sky Sports for that or whatever media outlets Omar you think would have a go at Paul Pogba. But don't, don't you, uh, this is my point here, don't you stoop yourself down to their disgraceful level by insulting and attacking Harry Kane for doing the same thing that you'd be happy for Pogba to do. If you're not happy for Pogba to do it, then then open up. My view is you don't create an equilibrium by treating everybody badly. Let me restart that again. You don't create an equilibrium and equality and, 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 and uh, a harmonious environment by... If you see if you see a, a person or a group of people being treated badly, you don't create the harmonious environment by treating everybody else badly at the same time. You do it by setting a great example and treating everybody with the dignity and respect that they deserve. And I know that you're going to do that, Omar. I know you're a longtime member of the Terrace. So I think Harry Kane is well within his rights to force them. I think all football players are well within their rights to force, force moves away from their football club. And I'll tell you as to why. I'll tell you as to why they're in their rights to do it. Because when their club doesn't want them anymore, when a club has had enough of of the player when they want to move on when they when when there's a, a newer fresher younger fitter model in the offing what happens <laughs> what happens they get sold they get moved on you know david beckham back in the day when fergie didn't want him anymore was left crying in his car after the meeting because he didn't want to leave man united who cared you know when tottenham hotspur don't want Eric Dyer anymore. When Tottenham Hotspur don't want Eric... What if Eric Lamella, Lamella were desperate to stay? He feels like he's given all these years of hard work and dedication and he didn't want to leave. No one cares. So it should work in reverse when a top player at a club wants to leave and the club's been difficult and they force it. I've got no sympathy for these football clubs whatsoever. Let's do some more of these comments here. Harry Kane is doing the right thing is what Chris says. Let him go, Levy, is what Marble Hall TV has got to say here. Absolutely. Want to get some Spurs fans involved here, but do us a big, big favor now. If you think Harry Kane is going to leave, smash that like button. If you think Harry Kane is doing the right thing by forcing a move, smash that like button. And I know Spurs fans are not going to thank me. I know they're not going to thank me for saying this. But I have to say it. I, 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 do, I do have to say this here. Harry Kane is doing the right thing for his career as well. He's doing the absolute right thing for his career. There is no doubt about that whatsoever. Completely and utterly the right thing. Free Harry Kane. Terry, this reminds me of Coutinho at Tottenham three seasons ago, is what Ali said. Absolutely. Um, I, I get where you're coming from with that completely and 
utterly. Um, let's go to the first caller of the day here. Rio Mark is on the show with us now. What are you saying, buddy? Are you there, Rio? Rio, are you going to speak? No, Rio's not going to speak. So we'll put him backstage. He might want to speak in a few moments' time. Um, let's do some more of these comments here. No cap, Terry. Hang on, where's it gone? Imagine Modric stayed at Tottenham instead of going to Real Madrid. Spurs is an institution of failure. Twisted Bubba here says, Terry, why can't footballers just hand in a, a resignation letter like other jobs? Because they're not employed like other jobs. They're not in a... You and I, when we, most employed people are in an open-ended contract. You have a notice period. Sometimes you might have competition clauses in your contract and stuff like that. But as a general rule, you hand in, you do your notice period, and you can leave and move on. Player contracts are very, very different when it comes to footballers. They, their contract has a period of time which they are required to see through unless somebody buys their player card. So they can't just hand in their resignation and leave. What they can do is pay off their own contract. So what you could see a player do is say, well, I want to leave. My contract's worth 25 million pounds, I'll pay off my contract. It's hard to do, but there is the way that there, there is a possibility of that. It actually it's kind of how Neymar went from Barcelona to PSG. Neymar got a personal sponsor that paid him enough money for him to buy his own contract out, therefore circumventing financial fair play rules. Essentially, it was probably a little bit more complex than that, but there we go. Uh next caller we're gonna get on is uh Hero. Hero's on the show now. Who do you support, Hero? Um, during my during my guy, I'm just a Spurs fan. I'm just a bit concerned over this Hurricane transfer saga. I honestly, when I saw that Hurricane wanted to do Spurs, I was just I literally had to break down. But then I thought he's like 28. He's in the prime of his career, and he hasn't won a single major trophy yet. But if he does go. Who do you think is going to replace him? And um, according to one football, Everton are actually willing to let Richarlison go. So I thought maybe we could sign Richarlison, but that's very unlikely. Um, look, the way the way I would look at it is very simple. I think you have to. I think Danny Ings would be a very good option for you as a striker and a goal scorer. I mean, maybe. But um, to be fair, we. Could signings, but then age, I don't think he's on his side. And when you start to hit that 30s, it's basically like a death sentence for you. You're going to keep on declining. But there is a chance that you might still have it, even when you reach those 30s. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, look, I'm just throwing it out there. You, you kind of put me on the spot with that one. I think Danny Ings would be an option. I think when it comes to Everton, if, you, if, you're being, if Spurs are being ambitious and are trying to sort of spend money in the in the in the right way I think we're trying to just kind of stand wisely because we're mainly focusing on our offense i mean we've already announced Delini on loan romero is set to join spurs according to uh, from britian romano it's a done deal but i mean i mean you're I'm not you're, sure you're, because we focus on the defense i'm worried that we might not i, I mean on. we had carlos Vinicius. i mean we had carlos Vinicius on loan at uh, last season, I mean, we could have signed him, but then he only really got game time in the Europa League, and now we're not in it. We're only no, in the exactly. League. Like like I was trying to say, mate. I think Spurs. If you're acting like a big club, you've got to go and try and a big sign a big replacement. A Cal Calvert Lewin, Danny Ings are the bottom level that you now need to be aiming for and above um, to, to, to cover that hole. But listen, mate. Thank you, Hero, for the call. Really appreciate it, buddy. Top top man. Thank you. Uh, Sasco here says, um, good, good on him. There's no loyalty in the game now from fans or from clubs. You need to look after yourself first and no one remembers loyalty anymore. And I think that's a very, very, very true statement when it comes uh, to this situation. There's no doubt about it. We've got man like AJ coming on next big Tottenham fan. Um, Harry Kane has not arrived at training. It has been confirmed now by Fabrizio Romano. I can tell you by Dean Jones has confirmed this as well. This is Harry Kane's choice not to be at training. Give me your thoughts and feelings, AJ. Well, go on, Terry. You good? I'm very, very well, my friend. Uh, what, what do you make of his decision to not turn up? 
listen, Terry, you know I will, I'm very loyal to Harry Kane, 99% of the time, within reason, I'll defend him more than anything. It's just, it's just sad how it's gone about, really. And the, th- the annoying thing is, this is all Daniel Levy's fault, and I stand by that, because he's allowed this team to fall apart. Harry Kane, I don't doubt he'd love to win a trophy at Spurs, but he, now he feels he has no choice and he has to go. I have highly doubt he doesn't want to, but he knows he has to for to get the best for him, and I don't blame him whatsoever. It's just sad. But what I can say is what Harry Kane's done by doing this is... This is very similar to Luka Modric and Gareth Bale. Luka Modric pulled this stunt when he wanted to go Chelsea. Daniel Levy didn't let him go. And then the following year, he went Real Madrid. Gareth Bale, he did he did the same thing. And Daniel Levy waited till um, for a world record fee on the last day of the transfer window. So if Harry Kane wants to go City, <coughs> sorry, I don't think he'll be like, you know, people are saying, oh, Spurs should compromise and just let Harry Kane go for, like, cheaper and a player with the deal. I don't I don't see that happening. I see Daniel Levy waiting till like, he gets, like, something close to 150 mil. But Harry Kane, that's my guy. I'll defend him more than anything, but it's, I'm not really disappointed in him. It's just sad how it's gone, I've gone about. I, I understand. Um you know, disappoint. Like I, I understand it's 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 a hard one because it's such a, a player that you all love so much. But let me mm. ask you this question: If you take his Spurs hat off, do you support his decision from a professional standpoint to leave? Do you think he's making the right choice for Harry Kane? A hundred percent. I don't. I don't agree with the not turning up to training thing. But if I agree with, what? Well, sorry, Terry, my head's my shut. But yeah, I agree with his choice that he wants to leave, just not. I just, yeah, just not the way he's gone about it. I'm a bit disappointed in him in that. But uh, And I, I do understand why he'd be disappointed because it isn't nice when a player wants to leave regardless. It makes it even worse mm-hmm. when it's when it's done in this way. There is no doubt about it. When it's done in this way, when it's forced in this way, it yeah, always it makes is. it harder. It always makes it a, a more bitter pill to swallow um as it were like it, it it always it always has and it always will um mm. but that's where th- there is the fan mentality towards it and as in a, a Spurs fan and then looking at it from a the point of view of of Harry Kane who of course wants this move away but for very very different reasons indeed in terms of a, a, a of a replacement AJ what's the level of caliber what is the type of player that you think from this point Spurs have to go after now to ensure um, you know, you because you've got to cover those goals, haven't you? You've got to cover those goals, and you've got to what's the word I'm looking for in the right way here? You've got to try and replace him in one way, shape, or form. Who would you like to see Spurs go after, and why? Uh, listen, Spurs are going to need three men to replace Harry Kane. Two two players to replace him won't be enough. But Danny Ings, I have always wanted him. Like as a second, even when Harry Kane was like dead set to stay at Spurs. I've wanted Danny Ings for the longest time. Like, he popped, not last season, the season before, he popped off 20 goals for Southampton. I know Spurs aren't in the best place right now, but we're better than Southampton. He'll get near 20 goals for us with the chances we make, I think. But yeah, and he's got one year left at Southampton. I'm pretty sure he he wants to leave there as well. So he's some he's someone I think we should look at. Danny, Danny Ings could certainly be certainly be a good quality player for you. I don't think there's any any kind of doubts about that whatsoever. Um, from from your point of view, you, you mentioned three or four players to replace him. Are you concerned about another? I don't remember what year it was, but when Gareth Bale left and you ended up signing a lot of the wrong, or a lot of the wrong players, are you concerned that could happen again? Yeah, because I don't trust Daniel Levy of flipping anything. He's this is all his fault, man. I, I can't stress that enough. Like, he's made boyhood Tottenham fan Harry Kane. I know the comments are going to be busting up saying, oh, he's an Arsenal fan first, but he's a Tottenham fan eventually. But Daniel Levy has made a Tottenham fan feel like he has to do everything he can to leave. It's, yeah, no, nah, you can't trust Daniel Levy with anything. He'll wait until he gets the biggest figure for Harry Kane because essentially by not turning up to training, Harry Kane has pretty much played into his hands. 
Yeah, I hear you on that, Adrian. I can sense a disappointment in your voice, mate. I, I, I totally get why you feel the way that you do. Uh, we'll speak to you again soon, mate. Thank you for coming on the show and having your say. Top, top man. Thank you. Um, Dan here with a super chat says, as a United fan, this makes me admire Kane because it shows he is determined to be successful and win trophies. This is how you deal with Levy. And I do think that needs to be taken into consideration here. Le Levy is notoriously difficult to do business with. So you have to fight fire with fire, I think. I think that's why Harry Kane is doing what he's doing. And I'm also proud of Harry Kane for pushing for a move away. I think Harry Kane is right to do this. I think he's sensible to do this because Harry Kane knows that the goal records alone that he's breaking are not enough to cement a lasting legacy in the game. If Alan Shearer, who did win a Premier League, if Alan Shearer had made the right choice, in my opinion, and joined Man United, it actually meant that we, we wouldn't have signed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, which... Would have, would have made me sad reflecting back because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was a legend on the pitch for Man United. But I believe with Alan Shearer at United, he would have scored more goals than he did at Newcastle. So he would have been an even higher goal scorer. I believe he would have won multiple Premier Leagues. I think he would have won, been part of teams that won doubles. I think we, I think we could have even won Europe at least one extra time because his goal scoring prowess was absolutely sensational. If Alan Shearer had joined Man United and been part of that treble winning team, and had won five, six Premier Leagues and scored more goals, I think Alan Shearer would be cemented as the greatest ever Premier League player, not Thierry Henry. The one thing that always holds people back from mentioning Alan Shearer, he's a good technical footballer, great finisher, could score tap-ins, long-range efforts. He's a very, very good footballer. He's, in fact, the only one one... Listen, most players would love one Premier League. I'm not putting it down, but I'm talking about cementing legacy. If Harry Kane now goes on to City from here or Chelsea from here, and scores, breaks Shearer's goal scoring record and wins two or three Premier Leagues and a Champions League, he suddenly goes into that conversation of being one of the greatest ever strikers in English football. He goes into the conversation of being one of the greatest strikers in European football because he'll have the individual output records and the trophies to boot. So it makes complete and utter sense why Harry Kane would go and do this. It really, really does. Thank you here to Jack for becoming an official member of the Football Terrace, signing up and becoming an Academy member of the Terrace today. A massive thank you. Remember, we are running a competition through August. We're picking out three names. One, two of them are going to win a football shirt of their choice. Another person we're picking out of the hat for this competition will have their name, their photo, put up in Unit 7 on our brand new member wall in the Football Terrace studio, which is actually being kitted out uh, pretty much today. How you enter this competition is simple. Any green super chat, and you know by moving the cursor along if it goes green, but anyone who signs up to be a brand new member in August will go into the prize draw to win one of these prizes. So a massive thank you to you, my friend. We have another super chat here from Awesome, who says Tottenham um, have has no ambition and average players can come there to make um, Benjamin with no consequences. Uh, Levy made fans, made fans to be the player supporters instead of the club. He's what, I get what you're saying. Yeah, he's made because of the way he, they run the club, the, the fans love the players more than the football club and it makes it harder. I get you on that. Do me a big favor, by the way, and smash that like button, people. Let's get this past 500 likes. Harry Kane has not shown up to training today. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on this. We've got an Arsenal fan on next. Gunner King is here. What are you saying, buddy? How's it going? You all right? I'm very uh, good. Uh, what's your take on Harry Kane's decision to not turn up to training today? First of all, I'm going to laugh because it's Tottenham. <laughs> Second of all, though, right, the thing is, right, if we're being serious, you can't really be surprised by it because Daniel Levy is like this. This, this is what he does. He digs his heels in. He makes himself notoriously difficult to deal with. And I think, I think it's been clear for a while, not just this season, that, that you know Kane has made it clear that he wants to win trophies. And when you know you've got a player with that ambition, I mean, I look at two seasons where Potts wasn't allowed to sign players. And I think that doesn't show that you're willing to match the ambition that this player has. So you should fear this consequence. You, you should be able to see it, you know. And I, I really think... I speak to a lot of Spurs fans and, um, you know, a few of them were throwing shade about Xhaka extending his contract potentially yesterday um, as if this isn't a bigger problem. You know, I think the, the, the issue is if you've got a player and a bunch of players, I think Son as well, 
Now, granted, Son has renewed his contract. That are ambitious, that want to win things, that aren't motivated by money, because Kane isn't. You know, Kane. You know, I think genuinely loves um, Spurs. You know, even though he was an Arsenal fan prior, or probably still is um, in his heart of hearts. But when when you've got these players that want to win things, they, then this is going to happen. A lot of my Spurs mates, they they remind me that oh, the FA Cup isn't a major trophy anymore. You know, relative to top four or winning other trophies, and they're right, and they're right. But if we look at Aubameyang's situation when we won the FA Cup, when he was looking to leave, no one can argue that winning that FA Cup showed a, at that time a sense of direction. Now, I know Aubameyang fell off last season, mm. but this is the difference. You know that even as small as it might be, an FA Cup, you know, and to have not done that, to have lost out on the Carbro Cup last year. To see Levy not putting into the squad what is needed to make it competitive, this is always going to happen. Um, I think the best they can do now is just take the money and cut. Um, I think in in Son they've already got a ready-made replacement. This this guy is he's he's a, he's an exceptional talent. Son, and I think he's more than ready to take up the mantle. They they can take that money, invest it in two or three other areas. They're, they're already doing good business. Christian Romero looks good. Brian Hill looks good. I, I know they brought a keeper as well. Um, I don't know too much about, but look, take that money. You know, there's two or three other areas of the pitch that they need to improve in. You know, bring in a good striker as well. Mm. It's it's not the end of the world. Well, this is the one thing I would... You make a great point there about Tottenham mm. in this situation. That it's, it's always going to be the world's coming to an end. Our best player is leaving. There is a, a, a kind of hyperbolic over-exaggeration from fans nowadays when your best player is due to leave about the club falling apart. Now, you could take the case in point of, of going back to Arsenal from the invincible period and look that it was almost systematically every year a top player left. It's yeah. about the response of the club. So I absolutely get people's point that if, you know, if Paul Pogba leaves Man United and we replace him with a McTominay-level player, be angry and be annoyed. It's almost impossible, though, to, to replace Pogba Mm -hmm. it's good because he's one of the best. It's almost impossible. Even It's even harder to replace Harry Kane yeah. because of the level of goals he scores. But what you can do is, as the, the previous caller said, it might take three players to replace him. So it could very much be, it could very much be, you bring in, I'm just throwing these names out top of my head, Dominic Calvert-Lewin comes in from a striker point of view. You look at an, a, a new inside forward who's a very good goal scorer and you bring in uh, still a player that I think they, they, they sort of need is is the replacement for Christian Eriksen, who's more of a creator. And through buying the right plethora and quality of player, you can get yourself into a situation where Harry Kane is always going to be missed in a certain degree. But as long as you replace those goals, you might actually strengthen the squad um, across the breadth. It's about how Daniel Levy spends this money That's if it. they end up selling him than anything else. But listen, Gunner King, thank you very much, mate, for coming on, having your say. Really appreciate it, mate. Top, top call as always. Thank you. Very excited about our next caller who's coming on. Um, it's been my fault more than anything. I have I've not had this man on the show yet because I reach out and then I just don't check my DMs for like three days and I realise people have come back to me. I'm awful when it comes to these things. Um, we've got the boy Hotspur coming on now. The football ingenious is here himself. Absolute top man. Welcome uh, to the football terrace. Big Spurs fan, as we know. A huge breaking news today that Harry Kane has decided himself not to turn up to training today. Um, I would love your take on this as a Spurs fan. And as I said, as again, I say, uh, thank you for coming on the terrace and, and, and giving us your thoughts. No, um, absolutely right. And I think we can go 50-50 on the um, bad communication front, by the way. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, brilliant. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, I'm not shocked by this at all, I have to say. Um, I was expecting today um, to be busy um, in relation to um, Christian Romero and to Harry Kane um, because it was inevitable. This has been a collision course that's been coming for weeks. And um, I think there's been a fair amount of disinformation doing the rounds. People saying, oh, he's got a contract and he must honour his contract. And I, it doesn't work like that. Football contracts these days, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just saying it's how, how it works. They're insurance for the clubs. And they're just purely leverage in the draw for the clubs. And um, I don't think it's unfair comment to say that uh, Daniel Levy and Enoch have let Harry Kane down. 
Um, I don't see what more he could have done. And, um, you know, let, let, let him free like a dove. <laughs> Yeah, I, look, I, I find it for me, like, I, not being a Spurs fan, I, I can look at this very, very differently. Uh, you know, there's no kind of emotion to it. I felt for a while that Harry Kane needed to leave. And I'm not even like having a pop at Tottenham. It's, I look at Harry Kane as being this talent, which he, I want to see him cement a legacy within the game. And we all know that you need to win trophies to do that. And it just, it, I, I thought the trophies were going to come up behind the potch. And it just hasn't happened. And Kane's at that really difficult age now where Spurs look like they're going to start to rebuild a team now. You can kind of see that with R Romero's, Kunde that you tried to sign, uh, Hill that's come in. These are young, exciting talents. But Harry Kane doesn't have the time to wait three or four more years for you to maybe start winning the major trophies again. He's got to make a decision now as to, if he stays at Spurs now, that, that could pretty much be it, like the rest of his career. And I just would be upset for him if he finishes it without a Premier League, without a Champions League, it's, um, it, you know, we, we, I get sad seeing Buffon not win a Champions League, but he's had a very good career, it, like domestically, if that makes sense. And, you know, sure. R9 didn't win a Champions League, but he won a World Cup and he won multiple league titles. I, I think Harry Kane is on that ilk with those players in terms of quality. He's in the ballpark and I just want to see him win. But do you do you sense that the deal will go through? Do you think that a deal will be reached with, between Spurs and a prospective buyer? Yeah, I do. Um, I think the... Um, I think the deal with Kane is that he is all bar achievements, and this sounds ridiculous, but it is what it is. He's all bar achievements, an elite level player. And if you want to be really nasty, you could say that uh, Hyung Son Min isn't, because whilst he's a fantastic footballer, he doesn't have that killer instinct or that drive. And just to give us context, so this isn't just my like opinion but you know why are my insights valid carl walker did a runner from tottenham even before the stadium was open so all this hogwash all this toffee about oh billion pound stadium oh it's amazing it's, oh facilities amazing footballers are they they're basically it's i take it back to you know like roman times and all they want is money and honor and the difference between those guys it means that you're left with the Harry Winks and the Eric Dyers of the world. And sadly, you're left with the Sonnies of the world as well. Yeah, listen, I, I understand where you're coming from. And and, and the money and the honour bit is, is very is very intriguing. I, I'm a working class lad from the East End of London. So whenever I see a football player being paid on paper, what's seen as obscene amounts of money, I, I celebrate it. I, anyone who's working class that can earn millions of pounds a, a, a week, a month, a year, I celebrate it and I understand why you do it. You know, if you can earn 200 grand a week at club A, but 400 grand a week at club B, I get why you would move. The other element though is very interesting as well. You know, having had a number of conversations with professional footballers over the years, it's often one of the key drivers for them. You know, what, you know, yes, I want to be paid, but also where can I go or what can I do to cement a legacy within the game? And I think, you know, I support Manchester United and I think about the fact that Jules best name has been sung at that stadium every single game mm. for the nearly 40 plus years since he stopped playing football for Manchester United. That's the kind of legacy that a lot of football players want to receive. They want to be remembered in the game. And George Best, would he have been remembered as much? We don't sing about any of the really talented players that played. Well, can Barrett I tell you, can I tell you where, can Brilliant. I tell you, can I tell you one, big, one big difference between Manchester United and Tottenham? It's the yeah. culture of the clubs. If you speak to any Manchester United fans um, who aren't millennials, <laughs> they will they will they will speak to you in terms whereby they demand certain standards from their players, and there's something inherent in the culture of that football club. It's the same at uh, Liverpool. It's the same at Leeds United. Um, I'd argue it's it's the same at Leicester City, which annoys an awful lot of people because you know. Um, but the culture at Tottenham is very different, and. If you, you um, you're 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 not you're not a Spurs fan, but if you were involving yourself in Tottenham events, they have club legends, and these guys float around the stadiums and they you know schmooze with the the higher end sort of gilt edge customers, and that's great. Some of them are legends, but some of them are not legends. <laughs> some of them have won nothing, and some yeah. of them have been involved in nothing of memorable. 
And that's the big difference. And I saw last week we had uh, Toby Alderweireld left Tottenham and people were, 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 some people, and you know who you are, <laughs> some people were referring to him as a legend. He's not. He's a very decent guy. Family man, talented footballer, gave his utmost for us on numerous occasions. But he didn't win anything. There was no continuity. There was no standard set. And that is history judges us on those things. You know, it's not like, oh, do you remember that really brilliant game we went to and we, we beat uh, so-and-so 5-4? Those are events. Those are memories. They're not part of history books. And that's the problem that Tottenham have. And that's why they can't hold on to their best players. And that's why Carrick left. And Carrick was a defining player for you. You, 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 you will acknowledge that. That was a guy that Tottenham never replaced. Um, Modric left. He was a defining player for Real Madrid. Spurs never replaced him. Berbatov left. There was another insanely hot footballer. And I know he didn't do that much for you, but he, he, he lifted silverware at, at Old Trafford. And Bale left. We don't need to delve into his CV. And now the next one is leaving. So this morning I've got phone calls coming in, text messages, this, that, and the other. And I'm not trying to be the coolest guy in school, but I'm absolutely not shocked. You know, I'm absolutely, this is, this has been a collision course coming for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. No, I, I totally agree. First of all, what you said there about the, leaving to win cementing legacy you know the word legend being bounded about and you all those players you mentioned there michael carrick again probably the most disrespected midfielder in english football history in my opinion um yep. the irony in it is we, all the debate for years was lampard or gerard and yes they were probably more exciting on the eye but the greatest club manager of all time built his midfield around michael carrick um, and one more go. with michael carrick in the midfield than the other two the other two clubs did um in that time period and i think it's you see more and more of that from Tottenham. So I'm not, I'm not sure why Well, I get why the younger Spurs fans are shocked because of course they're not as long in the tooth as yourself. My dad is a Spurs fan, um, you know, in, in his mid sixties now. So he's experienced this. I've heard it being said many times that Spurs have turned a corner in terms of how they're going to operate as a club, the next level they're going to go to. But until you arrive at that next level, it, it's hard to believe in it. And the younger generation believe it because it's the first time they're really hearing it. They have a good four or five years on the potch. If you just look at what's happened, you had Mauricio Pochettino, the most successful in terms of in league positions manager you'd had in, in the Premier League era. Didn't quite win a trophy yet, but was on the edge. You know, he asked for little things like, can we install some new cameras so I can train the team? And it's going to, you know, the way they started treating him towards the end, I thought was, I thought was terrible. And then the squad has just systematically from that point dwindled, dwindled away. That isn't how a club, who are talking about dining at the elite and the elite end of the spectrum behave. And I think the Spurs fans, and I don't mean to sound disrespectful, have got to wake up and kind of realize that. And that's why your, your second point around this being a collision course, that was always going to happen. I, I just felt it was really, I don't know what the word I would use. I don't want to say delusional because that sounds rude, but I thought people were just burying their heads in the sand with this. Oh, nah, it's fine. Levy doesn't cave into these deals. But he has on every other superstar player that's wanted to leave in the past. So I don't understand what's different but, uh, about this one. Well, you know, the, and this is another thing. Um, uh, with Tottenham, um, and I appreciate your point about millennials. This is the first time maybe many of them have heard there's jam coming tomorrow. But um, the rest of us have been starving for decades. And we've literally two decades. And... Um, to the investment company. And this is the thing that a lot of Tottenham fans don't get. And I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because it's funny. It's the Homer Simpson thing. It's funny because it's true. This is our magic. This is, this is our, our, our sugar daddy moment. This is the, the rainbows and the unicorns. And we blew it because we got the wrong one. Tottenham fans, your average Tottenham fan doesn't want a, um, a foreign um, oligarch or whatever faint racial slur there is, or a Bond villain, let's call it that, a Bond villain in charge, because the whole thing's so immoral and un unethical and unappealing. But the reality is that's the way the sport has gone, and it's always been about money. It's just been getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, I've got to break it to you, isn't a football club anymore. It's an investment. And we're a property holdings, quasi, hot dog, artisan, nacho vending corporation, you know. And what 
when Daniel Levy says every single penny has gone back into the club, he there's a little asterisk there for the caveat that it 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 doesn't include what happens on the green stuff. So you've got a situation where Tottenham Hotspur are a Deloitte darling. They're up there with the big hitters, including yourselves, uh, Real Madrid, you know, all the names we know, the European Super, Super League names, incidentally. And yet we don't win anything. <laughs> now, this isn't a, yeah. this isn't complex. This isn't a riddle. You know, yeah. you, you know, an eight-year-old child with not much imagination could work that one out. Um, mm. And there are small things that could be done. Um, I mean, how many days was it? I forget the actual, actual number. It was either 505 or 552 days or something that Pochettino didn't get any transfer activity. Mm. You know, at what point do you say to the farmer, mate, you've got to go out and feed those cows and sheep because otherwise they're going to fall over. You know, yeah. this is not complicated I, stuff. So no, Spurs I, I, are, I, I, are focused I purely on, on capital assets. No, I, I totally agree with you on that. And it's made easier because, again, we live in we live in the, the age of PR and there's always been a way of fans just buy into it every time. And I get why fans do it. Younger fans, especially, they want to defend their football clubs and everything else. Uh, buddy, listen, I appreciate you coming on. I have to go now. It's the end of the stream. I appreciate you coming on and give us your thoughts and your feelings. Everyone that's – we do have a couple of super chats. I've got a, a raid in here, Terry. Any news about Alex – uh Gromedo the city yeah i read about that this morning talks open but i don't know much more about it than that i'm afraid uh lang and sweet marble halls here says no salt but harry kane that, to was, leave. that was that was 499 that was 499 <laughs> to tell him you didn't know much about it wow yeah, what a business um, huh what a business uh, marble halls tv here says uh no salt but kane <laughs> has to leave uh he has uh we had sesk nasri rvp for the same re um, reason unpopular opinion but loyalty shouldn't exist in football it's a job that's from an arsenal fan and again arsenal have suffered this as you, as you say when things started to fall apart and go from there but everyone who's tuned in a massive thank you to each and every single one of you take care good